I am leaning as I climb a hill in the 2025 Toyota Land Cruiser. At long last, yes, we are behind the wheel. It's a real vehicle and driving it back to back with the unveiling of the new Toyota 4Runner, the off-road mood is in the air. Of course, this thing is built for a fair bit more than just the off-road and really honestly has sort of confused a lot of people. So today we're going to spend our time out on the trails here enjoying this here Land Cruiser, but also make sense of where it fits, how it compares with that overlapping 4Runner and Tacoma, and how you really justify that really steep cost. <laughs> So, the cruiser nameplate has been away from Canada for quite a while. Last seen in really any form with the demise of the wonderful but bloaty FJ Cruiser all those years ago, it's wonderful to have this thing back. This new 250 series cruiser, as they're referring to it, fits in sort of alongside the 4Runner and adjacent to the Tacoma. Built from the same frame and platform as those two utes, as well as the same one that underpins now the Sequoia and the massive Tundra, this here truck comes standard and indeed only as a hybrid. That will be alarming news for some purists, but I've got to say, Toyota seems to be doing a pretty nice job with their hybrids. Of course, looking back, we've seen how that's iterated since the Prius, and well, yes, it was dorky in that implementation. Those Toyota hybrid powered vehicles have proven some of the most reliable cars on the road at all. And fitted here to the Land Cruiser with that new turbocharged four cylinder engine, puts out a fair bit of power. Official figures like the Tacoma Hybrid are 326 horsepower, but more importantly, 465 pound-feet of torque. That's a rich bit of output, and again, from a four-cylinder. Notably here, this is not a selectable 2x4. This is a full-time 4x4 vehicle. Directing that power is an 8-speed automatic transmission, which then feeds into a 2-speed transfer case, which, in cases like right now, is very helpful. 4-low is well appreciated here. And paired with what I've currently got is a center lock differential, as well as an electronically locking rear diff, if I so choose, it contributes to a good bit of off-road ability. But it must be said that that isn't necessarily the actual focus of this vehicle. You see, launched from that same platform as the 4Runner in Tacoma, there's a lot of overlap, but a very different ethos here. The Land Cruiser is meant to be the go-anywhere expedition sort of vehicle. This thing here is something that definitely can do a lot off-road, as I am experiencing right now but it's also very comfortable on the highway. Wind noise is reasonably well controlled. It's steady, it's smooth, it's very gracefully damped without being too bouncy. In a vein similar to the new Land Rovers, it's gonna be arriving in Canada as something of a lifestyle vehicle in a lot of ways. This compares to the 4Runner, which is still being built to be hard as nails. The 4Runner is squatter. It's a vehicle that's sorted to be more stable on the trails, to be more malleable for those who want to build out an overlanding or equivalent rig. The 4Runner also carries itself with almost an inch and a half more ground clearance and more aggressive approach and departure angles. The Tacoma also, depending on trim, is actually a more aggressive off-road vehicle. So then, why introduce a softer vehicle on a hardy platform? Well, I think part of it, to be a little cynical here, is that they know the market will bear it. We've seen, especially among the tech bros, the explosion in the overlanding scene, this whole following. Whether people are doing it in earnest or just as a rugged cosplay, the reality exists that there is money in this segment, and there is money to be made here in the Land Cruiser. How much money? Well, oh boy. These things start before delivery and fees and all that from a base MSRP of 69K. Stretch it up to the volume trim and you're over $77,000. The top premium trim, 83 grand. And if you go for one of those top flight first edition models, $90,000. These are really pricey rigs. Adding insult to injury too is the recommendation that you use 91 octane fuel. We remember how this went over in the FJ Cruiser. We all made fun of that thing for being thirsty and using the costly gas. And this is going to follow those footsteps. The silver lining though is that it seems you can probably get away with using 87 octane in here. That's because it uses the same hybrid powertrain as the Tacoma Hybrid and it puts out the same power figures. And the detail to note there is that the Tacoma comes rated for 87 octane. To hear it from Toyota, that's because whereas the Tacoma is more of a North American focused car, this is a world market vehicle and they point out that fuel grades and quality are not consistent across the world. 
that means that 91 is the safer recommendation for a turbocharged engine in a place where 91 may not really be 91. With all that noted too, fuel economy. For Canada, our can estimates are looking like 10.7 liters per 100 kilometers city, 9.5 liters per 100 highway, and a combined figure of 10.1 liters per 100 kilometers. So then, the return of a long-awaited nameplate in what is a really pleasant vehicle. Will this be an easy sale? Well, not necessarily, because those prices are really, truly steep. That said, I don't think Toyota is going to have any issue selling every unit they bring into the country. This thing is something special, and I'm really excited to see it landing. For Driving.ca, I'm Al Alder. For more off-road news, reviews, previews, specs, and all the rest, be sure to follow us online on Driving.ca, and check out our socials over on Instagram and Twitter.